Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I will use a spherical coordinate to calculate this Gaussian integral. This is a new method because I haven't seen this method anywhere on internet. Before making this video, I did a lot of search, but I didn't find any videos or web page to talk about this method. So probably this is the first video to show this method. And if you found any videos about this method, please let me know and leave a comment under this video. And I will calculate this integral by without calculating this integral. It sounds make no sense, right? What do I mean by saying that calculate this integral by without calculating this integral? And you will see the answer later. So let's get started. Here is the most general form for the Gaussian integral. And this integral can be reduced to this one. And you can click here to see my previous video about how to reduce it into this form. Basically, we just did a complete square and then make a u substitution. Then we can reduce it into this form. So we need to solve this integral, which is colored in red. And this is the core part. And we define this integral as capital K. Because this is a definite integral, so we are free to choose the integration variables. So I choose x, y, and z as integration variables. Then we can find k cube as a product of these three integrals. Next, we write it as a triple integral. And then we introduce this spherical coordinate. And this figure shows the relation between the Cartesian coordinate and the spherical coordinate. Then we plug in this coordinate transformation to compute the x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And next, we factor out this blue term. And we got here. And because cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1, so we got here. And then we factor out this rho squared. And again, the sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1. So we got here. And then we plug in to replace this power index. So we got here. And next, we need to deal with this dx, dy, dz term. And this term can be written as a Jacobian multiplied d rho d phi d theta. And here, the j is the Jacobian. And for the spherical coordinate, we can find the Jacobian equals to rho squared times sine phi. To make this video compact, I will put the derivation for this Jacobian at the end of this video. Right now, let's accept this result temporarily. And then we plug in to replace the dx, dy, dz term, so we got here. And because the rho phi and the theta, these three variables are not coupled, so we can split it into the product of three integrals. And for the first term, it's simple, it equals to 2 pi. And for the second term, we can integrate it, and we got here. After plugging numbers, we can go to the k cube, which is here. So I copy the result from the previous slide. And we will do the integral by part next. So we write it into this way. And then we simplify it. Next, we apply the integral by part, and we got here. So for the first term, we need to evaluate it at 0 and infinity. At 0, it equals to 0. At infinity, we need to calculate the limit, so we got here. And because this limit is in the form of infinity over infinity, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule, and we got the limit equal to 0 at infinity. So the first term vanish. Then we got here. And note here, for this integrand function, it's even. So this integral can be written in this way. We can extend the lower limit from 0 to negative infinity. And then we put a factor 1 half in front of this integral to compensate. And next, the 2 and the 1 half, they cancel out, so we got here. And remember for the definition of our k. And this integral is equal to k, so we got here. So finally, we got k cubed equals to pi times k. And if you remember, in the very beginning of this video, I said we will calculate this integral by without calculating this integral. That sounds make no sense. But here is the reason. You can see we never directly calculated this integral k. 
What we did so far is to derive a relation between the k cube and the k. And then from this relation, we can immediately solve k, which is equals to square root pi. And this is the result for the Gaussian integral. So this is an indirect method. If you compare this method with the polar coordinate method, you will find the difference. For polar coordinate method, it's a direct way to calculate the integral k. But here, the spherical coordinate method is an indirect way to calculate k. That's why in the very beginning of this video, I said we will calculate this integral by without calculating this integral. And finally, let's derive the Jacobian to complete that missing step. So for the spherical coordinate, the Jacobian is defined in this way. And recall the coordinate transformation between the Cartesian and the spherical. So we plug them into the definition of Jacobian to calculate those partial derivatives, and we got here. And next, we will calculate the determinant of this matrix. Because there is a zero entry at the third row, so I will choose the third row to expand this determinant, and we got here. Note for the blue term, we can factor it out, then we got cosine 6 squared plus sine 6 squared, which is equal to 1. And similarly, for the green term, we can factor it out, and also we got cosine squared plus sine squared, which is equal to 1. So we can simplify it to here. And then we take out the parentheses we got here. We factor out rho squared times sine phi, and inside the parentheses it equals to 1. So we got the result for the Jacobian. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel if you like it.